Margaret C. But Cynthia Bailey will be reading the agendas. Definitely, due to the fact my eyes are not focusing anywhere. Cynthia's going to help me out. <laughs> ready? I'm ready. Like I can see. <laughs> <laughs> Alan is working out of the manual communicating on video, project number two, the interview show. His objectives to understand the dynamics of an interview or talk show to prepare for the questions that may be asked of you doing an interview program, to present a positive image on camera, to appear as a guest on a simulated video talk show, time five to seven minutes. Okay, we're gonna be doing two projects here, one project, one minute in the middle, and a project after that. We are filming a segment of Good Morning Grand Rapids. Here is Alan Hartman, a great motivational and inspirational speaker that came from a unique circumstance. The speaker has a unique perspective on life, seeing he is going through it himself with a disability. Here to interview this relatively new speaker is our vivacious Lynn Bradley Horan. <laughs> that there's no way to cure it is <clears throat> stretching and exercise on a regular basis and uh, so I go to the gym at least once a week if not twice a week keep in shape and then I do these 5k walks or, or other walks like I mentioned there's another one which is Two miles, so that I do about three feet. So I'm doing that. And my kids are always saying, Go to the gym today, so they're always holding me accountable. Or come home from school and say, Have you gone to the gym? 
<laughs> they keep you on track, is yeah. that it? Right. Okay. And if it's not, then that's one life. Uh, we have to do that. So. I've heard you suggest to audiences that nothing is impossible. Where did you come up with that? What What is it in you that gives you this drive and this passion to overcome obstacles? Well, I don't know, my aunt just saying, you can't just sit there. Got two young kids that kind of like up to, or mimic you, I guess, especially when they're not looking. And you just got to stay positive because she's, I'm not exactly sure, but she's gone through cancer, horrible car accident, and those two I know for sure, but I'm sure she's been there with other obstacles in her life. So she was an example to you. She yeah. inspired you, yeah. and now you want to inspire others. Right. I understand that you do a lot of volunteer work around that working in the school. Yes. Tell us about yeah. that, working with the children. <laughs> I volunteer at school, mainly when my kids were in elementary school with this watchdog program, which is pretty much any male figure in a kid's life who spends all day at school, goes to different classes throughout the day, has a chance to, to lunch or and outside if you want with your child. And even if you don't have a child, like if you have a neighbor, you go spend time with that child. And then also I volunteer for an hour, maybe a couple hours, help out with mainly math, once in a while, a few other things. And also I do a watch uh, with the little kids. They kind of read to me, kind of getting their practice in. I've heard you mention that now that your kids are getting a little older, I yeah. understand your daughter just turned 13. Right. That they are turning this around on you. Well, Dad, you told us to, yeah. to really dig in. Tell us about that. How's that working for you? <laughs> well, it's kind of like the monkey see, monkey do syndrome there. Kind of turn on my words against me sometimes. Because uh, they're getting to the age where they're winning more arguments than I am sometimes. <laughs> well, what is the takeaway that you want to give to our audience? What do you want our audience to remember? Um, like Audrey Hepburn once said, nothing's impossible. The word itself says, I am possible. And like I previously said, what your mind can conceive your body will find a way to achieve. And who is that to say you won't do it better than your neighbor or your best friend? So. Well, Alan, you are an inspiration for me, and I'm sure our audience feels the same. We can see your videos on YouTube, isn't yeah. that correct? Correct. And be watching for Alan speaking at church, perhaps, in the near future. And now back to Good Morning Grand Rapids. Thank you. I'll call for one minute. We have one minute for an evaluation in that section. Say any time we're Do you want to use it? Yeah.
And Cynthia, could you read the objectives of Project 3, please? Again, he's still working on the communicating <laughs> video. This is project number three, when you're the host. The objectives, to conduct a successful interview, to understand the dynamics of a successful interview or talk show, to prepare questions to ask during the interview program, to present a positive, confident image on camera. Time, five to seven minutes. We are filming another segment of Good Morning Grand Rapids. Have you ever thought of entering a speech contest? Well, Maureen not only entered a great speech contest, but she competed internationally. Here is your host, Alan Hartman, to interview the great speaker, Maureen Savage. Thank you for sharing your story with me, Maureen. Well, I ask you a few questions about your uh, speech to walk with. Come on. Okay. <clears throat> what was it like speaking to a big crowd, especially being an international crowd? There was, it was like nothing I've ever done before. And the day be I have to back up the day before the contest was a semi-final preparation where you're meeting your contestants, the nine other individuals who I was going to compete against. I had no idea who they were. I saw their names before, but I hadn't looked up where they were from. And I walked into a large, large gathering room, and our group was right at the front. And we just started meeting each other, and we were like seriously old friends. We were high-fiving each other. It was so gratifying to know these people were not like hoity-toity. They just were regular people like you and me who loved Toastmasters and had worked their way up through the ranks to the contest. So it was with that spirit of camaraderie that I took into the contest. And I, before I went on stage, I'm realizing here is a man from Portugal on my right, a woman from Taiwan on my left, there's the guy from New Zealand and Canada, and four or five other individuals from other parts of the United States. And I thought, this is really cool. <laughs> Just <laughs> cool friends from Toastmasters. We had all signed each other's cards and everything. And so it went in with this camaraderie, but the speech itself, I felt that every single piece of evaluation I had received, I was bringing with me on that platform. So I felt confident that I had you know, really practiced it. Um, did you? Are, are you teaching your kids, like in your speech, the, your lessons that your mom tried to teach you or pass down? Yes, I am. And it's funny that you mentioned that because it wasn't until I was taking the first flight from Grand Rapids to Denver that I had an emotional moment and it was the realization that people from all over the world were going to learn about my mom. I had been so concentrated on the speech itself and the gestures and the words and putting it all together that it just really hit me hard that people would finally learn about my mom. And that this great motivation that she had that she instilled in me and that I would hopefully pass on to my children but even to others who might want some support. I'm sure they're them. passing on to their kids. Or I hope so. <laughs> how big of a leap of faith did or how, I'm sorry, how big of a leap did you take out of your comfort zone and try to do this? Well, I have competed at least 10 times in the international contest. And so it was the realization that you are practicing skills throughout all of your journey in Toastmasters. But as far as a leap of faith for the contest, I think the biggest leap 
was trying things that were out of my comfort zone just in the speech itself. To, to be a little more bold and try new, you know, humorous parts and, and just try to be a little bit more on top, you know, a little more notch above than what I had tried before. Approximately how many times did you have to revise your story? I have at least 30 different edited okay. pages. <laughs> Many of them will be in my comedy communicator manual. <laughs> I have at least 30 that were just on my computer, different changes. That doesn't count the ones on the way to Vancouver <laughs> and the one in the bedroom before I left the hotel the last day. So I would say probably around 35. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's dying to know, did your husband ever get a cell phone? I bought a car the day we, before we left. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Which was quite ironic uh -huh. after all that. <laughs> well, we're running low on time, so it'd be great to have you back someday and interview with you again. That's a great talk show. Great. And I would love to do that again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>